Hi, I'm Craig Phillips, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build your own coffee table with storage space out of old recycled pallets. And the tools you're gonna to need, a chop saw. If you don't have a chop saw, a hand saw is fine. An electric sander or a sanding block, cordless drills, screws, glue, and a tape measure. Although I've took my pallet apart, I'm actually just going to put it together for a dry run to show you where I got the inspiration to build a coffee table. Now we all know what pallets look like. They've got three of these skids below and then they have the slots fixed across the top of them, of course with gaps in between. And you have the same along the bottom. This allows the forklift to go onto them. But I thought putting two of them together would make a perfect coffee table. But firstly, dismantle it all. What I'm going to do is fix these down, but a lot closer with no gaps in them for the top of the coffee table. And then once I've completed the top side of it, I'll repeat this for the bottom side of it and then simply sandwich those runs together. That way you've got a bigger gap for more storage space. I'm going to cut these skids down to a meter in length, so they're the same size as my slots and keep the table nice and square. I can use them later for my legs. I've cut three of the skids for the below, and then I've got my slats, which are a metre in length. So I'm just going to place them a metre apart. Centre one in the middle. I'll make a little mark at 500. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drill and put a screw in there for temporary at the moment until I get it nice and square. So we'll start with the pilot hole, drive one screw in. Doesn't have to be all the way at the moment, just getting them nice and flush. So we know that is a metre apart. Same again in the middle, just one as a temporary fixing because later on we'll put glue under there and fix them down but I want to get it square first and then I'm also going to put a temporary one on this edge, quick pilot hole, both sides and a loose fixing making sure you've got this edge flush. And what we have done is created our shape and our size for our coffee table. But what we do need to do is make sure that that's square. There's a couple of ways of doing it. One, you can use your set square and level it up that way. Or, if you're working on a large workbench like this, you can always take them to the corners, line it up flush with there, if we know that this is true, and then, of course, pull that edge up till it's flush with that end of the table. And that way we know there are two corners here are going to be nice and square. Then the next stage is we can bring some of our slots in and we can start to glue these and fix them down for permanent. Two pilot holes in the end to stop them splitting and then two screws driven all the way down so it holds it nice and tight. 
same again the opposite side. Squeezing them together so we've got no gap in between each of the timbers. Now if you find this could have a little bit of movement on the table, get your clamp and just simply clamp it down. Double check and it's flush with the end of the bench. Now that last one that we put the glue on is screwed into place. This first one and the very end one here, I'm going to take back off and then put some glue on there. Put two screws in each end, fixing it down. Making sure he's nice and flush with here, really squeezed in tight to the second to last slot and then screw them down nice and tight. Couple more pilot holes in here. And then you do the exact same on that opposite one there. Then you can turn this over. That could be the top or the bottom of your table. What we want to do is create the same as this again. But how we do it first is we get some more of the skids. We place these on because we want to double the gap size in between to give plenty of storage space. So you offer it up to the back there so it's nice and flush. Do your pencil line there, it's ready to cut. Same again with the other pieces, offer it up nice and flush to the rear, mark them on the underside. We're going to chop these down. Now these are cut down to size, fixing them to there is really important. What we are going to do is use large four inch screws. We're going to drill these through the wood, countersink them really deeply so they go in about 50 millimeters into the timber below to give us a good strong fixing. We start off by drilling pallet holes in first. Right the way down with them. And we swap the drill bit to a really large one, about 12 or 13 millimeters wide. And then we have to countersink the top of them, and we want to send this down to probably about that deep. Like that. We'll just clamp it to this, keep it nice and nice and secure. Plenty of glue along this edge. Place them in. Again, it's always wise to clamp it down. Making sure he's nice and flush on the face of it and also on both edges. There he is. Then we can get our large screws, put them in the pilot hole, start to drive them off and hopefully these should drill right the way down through the clearance hole and grab that timber below. Perfect, nice and solid. That's nice and solid. Do the same on them too. The next stage is to fit the pallet slats on the bottom of it. Again, 
we're going to put plenty of glue along these edges and then we're going to drill some pilot holes in the slats so they don't split. Offer it up that it fits nice and flush on the edges and start fixing it down. That's the top and bottom of the coffee table now complete. I'm going to give it a good sand up using a belt sander and then I'm going to route it a nice edge all the way around the top. Now we sand it down lovely and smooth. I've clamped them down to keep them nice and solid to the workbench. I'm going to start routing them. What I'm going to do is route it a nice beveled edge all the way around all four sides. Now in some of the pallets, you have the small blocks which sandwiches them both together. You can use these on the corners of your table to create little small legs. But what I am going to use is the offcuts that we had earlier from the skid sections of the pallet. And what I want to do is fix them so we create a kind of an L shape with them. And that way, we can make a perfect corner leg. We make four of them, the coffee table can sit on them. But we need to, of course, fix them together. So what we are going to do is drill a pilot hole in them first. Nice and deep with a countersunk piece on it. And that way, when our screw is driven in, it sits nice and flush below the top of the surface. And then we're gonna line them up, apply a small amount of glue on here and then I am going to clamp them together so they're nice and flush and tight Lovely. double check you've got them nice and square before you tighten them up yep and now to screw them into there I'm going to also clamp it to my bench to hold it nice and secure. Perfect. So now we have one corner leg firmly fixed together. So we place down, we'll do three more of them, sit the coffee table on top. Now you're ready to fix the four legs to the base of the table. I'm going to place it into position, setting it back about 20 millimeters there, making a little pencil mark where you want the leg. Transferring that to the inside of here and a couple of little crosses in place to drill a pilot hole where we're going to screw them. Perfect. And now I'm going to put some glue on the bottom of the leg. Place that in position. And I'm going to use a clamp to clamp him down. Bit tricky holding it into position. Double check that he's he's on your pencil mark. Squeeze him secure. Okay, now a couple of screws in the pilot holes, and they can be driven in using your screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> 
Brilliant. Now, take the clamp off. Once that glue's dry, that leg, perfectly solid. All I need to do now is put the other three on. Now that is our coffee table. Now complete, out of recycled pallet wood. Now, of course, you can stain this or varnish it to your own color that you choose. If you want to see more pallet projects, please visit the website, silverlinetools.com.